What's up, y'all? Welcome back. Y'all already know we're back with another one. But before we get into that, I just I have to I have to address this comment because I meant to talk about this in my last video, but I didn't. I cut it out, so I'm gonna go ahead and address it. I seen a comment and it said, "Girl, change that hairstyle." I ain't gonna cuss, but first of all, I just got my hair redone. Secondly. Y'all, I was trying to get the side swoop. You know the little cute side swoop girls be having looking real cute with the curls popping. But I don't know what happened. The girl sold my hair in. She told me, you need a deep part for this hairstyle. I'm like, all right, do it. Whatever you gotta do, hook it up, whatever. She sold my hair in. She was like, all you gotta do is tuck your hair behind your ear and da 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 da. I'm like, all right, cool, it should be easy. Get home, I tried doing the method, y'all, no. No, spend two hours trying to do this shit, no. I had somewhere to go that night, so I'm continuing getting ready. I'm just not liking it. I'm sweating, I'm getting hot and frustrated. So the track that I had glued in right here, it started lifting. So I'm like, oh no, I can't have that. Like it was showing. So I'm like, you know what? Let me go ahead and cut it, cut a piece of the track out and just like leave the rest of the track in because it looked nice and full up there. Y'all. Why I cut my damn leave out? Why? Y'all, I was so mad. Let me show y'all what my leave out is because this is getting tucked behind my ear, so that's fine. So this is the length of my leave out. This is the length. This is my hair. This is how, okay, so imagine this much hair over here. I don't wanna mess this part up because, uh, y'all, why I cut my shit to this? Can y'all see that? Can, do I gotta put the hand behind it? Do y'all see that shit? Do you, I cut that much hair. From this to this. So, look at that. <laughs> now, I've been going through it. Just know that before you start passing judgment, okay? And I just got it redone, so I'm not taking it out no time soon. So guess who gonna be seeing this side part for a little while longer? You. And if you don't wanna watch, because I got my little side part popping, that's fine too. You can come back when I get braids or something else. I'm not even the side part mamas, okay? I'm a middle part. I'm a middle part, half up, half down. I don't do the side part. I get a side part like twice a year. So this is my two times. Don't even trip, you will never see a side part again. I see nothing wrong with the little side part for a little longer. So. For you, I forgot your name, but I'm pretty sure I already put up the comment. I don't remember their name. Nine times out of 10, that page is a troll because they joined four weeks ago. Ain't nobody stupid. They lucky I wanted to address this anyway because y'all finna see the side part for a little cute minute. So I'm not finna keep rambling. We gonna get right up into the story. You already know the vibe. Go ahead and sit back, relax, grab your snacks, and tune in for this tea. Hey, don't get fucked by none of that shit. By none of that shit. So for this story time, I'm really finna take y'all way back in the day. Back in the day, we finna go back before Dre, my daughter's father. We finna go back before everything. We finna go back to them little teenager years, okay? I worked at Popeye's, very first job. First it was cool, ended up hating it, quit on a Tuesday. If you're new here, you need to watch my other story times. I have a story time playlist in the description box below because you will be highly confused. Go ahead and watch it, get caught up, get familiar with the people. This story involves Alicia, Drew, and we're gonna name her Tana. See my other story time, my best friend wants to fight me over some money that I gave her. If you haven't, go watch it. Like I stated in that video, me and Alicia, we was like this. We did everything together, at least at work. Now outside of work, it was a different story. I just remember always inviting Alicia over. And let me just tell y'all, I grew up in a very strict household. My aunt ain't like nobody up in her house, okay? She barely wanted me up in her house. That means I would have to beg ask fucking three days prior for somebody to come over for me to do something for somebody to sleep over anything oh so if i'm doing all that for you and then when it's time for you to come over you're like oh no i gotta watch my little brother or no my mama said i can't go just like making up all kinds of excuses i just thought it was like really really weird because for us to live so damn close i'm talking about not even a five minute walk we never hung out like that like we never hung out, but we claimed that we was best friends. And at work, we was inseparable. So I was, it was it was a little weird. I remember just like always talking to Chelsea and then her being like, girl, if I live that close to you, I will always be at your house or you will always be at my house. And I'm like, yeah, it's weird. Like, I don't work this shift with us, which was the closing shift. 
Y'all, when I tell y'all Popeyes used to have this up in there, this Popeyes was a brand new location. So I'm guessing they didn't really have all their shit in order or whatever. They, they couldn't really like time stuff right. So let's say we close, we close the dining area, drive through still open. The drive through still open and chicken is still being dropped. So we can't really clean the kitchen and wash the dishes and all that type of stuff. Y'all, when I tell y'all, we would be up in Popeye's at one and two o'clock in the morning trying to clean up, bro. Why just, why we just can't get there early? The next ship get there early and finish what the fuck we didn't finish. I don't, they worked us like a damn dog. And I didn't even realize, like, I'm like, yeah, I'm getting 40 hours, 725, I'm making that bank. I'm making that bank. So we was we was getting overtime, don't get me wrong. I was working 40 plus hours. That's some highway robbery shit. Okay, that's like damn near, not free labor, but it's the closest thing to it. Y'all, they're the reason I never applied for another fast food job ever in my life ever not even chick-fil-a we were all cool like we I, we was the most lit shift like everybody on the morning crew wanted to close like it was so fun because it was people that we remember from my like, middle school and stuff it was like people that we knew people that we went to school with not a morning shift we ain't know them people we ain't know where they came from like <laughs> me and tana is closer than tana and alicia but they're still very much cool tana was one of the few people our age that we knew had a car tana was 16 about to be 17 and i was 17 about to be 18 and she had a car so if we all like went to break together or me and tana went to break together like we would go get some food from somewhere we would go get like because we were sick of eating popeyes so we would go somewhere else and get food sit in her car and eat whatever so one day one of the fried cooks actually quit and they had to hire somebody new what we gonna call him okay we just gonna name him thomas so thomas gets hired on as the new cook thomas immediately has eyes for tana tana is very much his type so tom goes by i'm gonna speed it up him and alicia get real cool and you know like they have this like flirty kind of friendship they pop jokes they talk they talk about how much they don't like each other but they like secretly like each other mind you alicia boyfriend's still in jail alicia starts liking thomas but thomas likes tana even though tana is 16 and thomas at the time was like 19 or 20 get together thomas it wasn't one side they liked each other and alicia she began to get jealous and i was in the middle of it and it started to get messy like they don't got nothing to do with me. So she would always ask me like, do Tana talk about him? Do Tana like him? That are just like asking me little personal questions. And I'm like, girl, I don't know. Like, yeah, she like him, but like, I don't know what they really got going on. Like she don't really, she talk about him, but she don't go into too much detail because Tana was very secretive. Don't talk about that. We have other things to talk about. I don't know if I said this, but me and Alicia knew Tana from middle school too. So when the money situation happens, and me and Alicia like stop talking, we cut ties, it gets real awkward. Naturally, I'm close with Tana already, so now we get even closer. It's Tati and Tana in this bitch, like, ain't no Alicia. Alicia who? Alicia where? Okay, wait, let's pause because I did find some pictures on my Google Photos from when I worked at Popeyes, which is like, I don't even know how because that was so long ago. I was like really shocked when I found them. And I found this picture of a boy. Oh my God. I'm gonna call him Telvin. Telvin is like the first time I experienced like some kind of like racism. I don't think I had ever experienced nothing like this before. Obviously I gotta cover his face. Ooh, I wish I, I wish. I could show y'all his face. Telvin was Hispanic. He kind of thought that I was Hispanic. I get that sometimes like because of my name and then I have like real curly hair. Sometimes people come up to me and speak Spanish thinking I know Spanish. Like, no, I don't. Telvin, he always used to tell me like, I've had a crush on you, but I don't like black girls. Like, I wish you wasn't black. You gotta be like Colombian or something. You gotta be mixed with something. You're not all the way black. I'm blickety black, blacker than black, black. I'm blacker than black, yo. Blacker than black, you're not black, y'all. And I'm blickety black, black. Like, boy, I'm black. I am black. I'm not mixed with nothing. He was like, dang, I really can't talk to you. I really can't bring you home to my parents. Stop saying this shit to me every single day. He would throw around the N-word, but it wasn't the N-word with the A, and it wasn't the N-word with the E-R. It was like somewhere in the middle, and I'm just like, yeah, this dude is for sure racist. Like, so one day I decided to play with him. I was like, well, you know I'm Colombian, right? And he was like, I knew it. I knew you was Colombian. 
why the fuck didn't you tell me? He got so freaking happy. Like, it was like he could have jumped out his goddamn skin. That's how happy he was. And so you Colombian and black, I'll take that. Like, I can do that. Like, my parents will understand that. Mind you, I don't even like Kelvin. I just wanted to see, like, how far he was going to go with this versus ass bullshit. So I'm like, boy, I'm not Colombian. I'm black. I'm black. I'm black, 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 and black, black. I'm black and black, yo. When I tell y'all, Telvin got so mad, stormed off a drive-thru, like he wasn't taking no order and nothing, slung his headset, stormed out the kitchen into the restroom. Looking at his picture just really made those memories come back and, ugh, piece of shit. He was not joking. I don't, I don't, this was, this was for real. Like everybody has something to say about it. Even Thomas got in his face before for being blatantly racist. And mind you, Thomas is like six two. And Telvin is like six, I mean six, five five or something. And six two as Thomas had to check him for being racist. Back to the story, I just had to include that, I had to. Honestly, Alicia was jealous of Tana because of the attention that Thomas gave her, it was, it was a very, very messy. I literally felt like I was in school again. I don't like that. Time is going by and everybody's starting to come to their senses, but it's already too late. Tana and Alicia fell out. They do not like each other. It's too late. But they both realized that Thomas was a user. Thomas only liked people that could do stuff for him. Thomas didn't have much. So Tana had a car. Tana started giving him money and everything like that. And that's why he gravitated more to Tana. At first, Thomas was really in the middle because he liked Tana first, but then he liked Alicia too at one point because of their like friendship. I don't know what the hell they had going on. It was very, very messy. They both falling back. Alicia didn't really do nothing like Tana did. Tana would always give him rides home, always buy him food. As Tana and Thomas was so close, rumors started to go around speculating that they had slept together. It was never confirmed nor denied, but that was a big scandal. It was a mess. Neither one of us is cool with Alicia. That happens. Um, Alicia gets fired and I quit on a Tuesday and then Tana quits like shortly after. The day that Tana quit, she called me. She tells me she quit. I was so happy for her. Um, and she was like, I'm coming to get you. Let's go to the mall and celebrate. And I was like, okay, let's go. Like, bet. She comes, pick me up. We talking shit about Popeyes. We talking shit about everybody that worked there. We so petty, we called the store. <laughs> Wait, because we called the store. Tana, I, I put it on speakerphone. We asked to speak to the certain manager. I think I called her Quisha in my last video. Tana literally called me right after she quit. Like she had just left Popeye's on the way to pick me up. She's driving, I called, they're on speaker. She was like, I'm sorry for the misunderstanding. Do you want me to come back? Are you guys shorthanded? I really don't want you to be shorthanded. Yeah, so the manager was like, yes, oh my God. I'm sorry for the misunderstanding. Can you come back? The managers want to talk to you, da 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 We want to just go over a few things. Begging her to come back damn near. I'm like mouthing to her. We're gonna say psych on the count of three because this was her plan, but I just had to like count down to the psych. So I'm like, one, two, three. And then, and then we both say, we both, this was so fucking childish. We both like, psych, and hang up in the bitch face. <laughs> Time's going by. She's like, oh my God, I don't wanna go home. I really want you to spend the night at my house. So I'm like, okay, like I can spend the night at your house. Let me go home first and pack some clothes. So I go home, pack a little spin in my bag. We get to her house and Tana house was really nice. She lived in a really nice neighborhood. Her mom was home. Her mom was, her mom was the nicest lady I had ever met. Like ever. At first I'm just like, oh my, she's an angel. She was a literal angel. Like she, um, her parents were from the UK, so they had accents. Her mom would cook. Like her mom made. Her mom like had little appetizer things out or whatever. She had a movie room in her house. So we go up the stairs to go to her room. She bring all these snacks in her room, and we just like literally having the best time ever. I put on her Popeye shirt. We start taking pictures. We're like talking about how we should burn the shirts. Whenever her dad came around, her vibe changed. It didn't like raise any red flags, but it definitely made me raise my eyebrow because like she kind of made me feel uncomfortable with her dad being around because nine times out of ten when i went to her house her dad was not really around it changed her mood i had an idea but i don't want to say that because it was never confirmed now that we are both jobless her parents are kind of on her to find another job because like i said she had a car they bought her car they're paying everything for her car and the, like the least they wanted her to do was work so we're together every day, like I was saying, we go on a job hunt. Her dad was very serious about the job hunt and like, 
He wanted to see applications. He wanted proof of like that we were like not BSing and we were really looking for a job. So we're looking for jobs every single day. I'm playing around most of the time. Like we'll go look at them all for a job and then we would BS like and just like go shopping and shit with the money we didn't have. We should have been saving. We would always go to the mall. We would always go shopping on Harwin and stuff like that. Like it was real cute, real cute little times we had. One day we see that they're building a party city in the parking lot across. So let's say that this is Popeyes and then across there's like a whole nother like shopping plaza like that's being built and there's a party city over there. So we see that they're hiring, we go in, fill out the application. When we bring the applications back, we literally get hired on the spot. Like I was happy that we found another job quickly, but then again, I just wanted to BS around because we were out of a job for like maybe a week and a half. And that just wasn't long enough. I just got through slaving at Popeyes. Like, I wanted to be single. I didn't want to be tied down to no job. I want to be single. At this point, we are so close. We're thinking it's perfect. We can ride together. We can go home together, whatever. So that didn't really last long. Like, we were still close, but I know that she got tired of, like, picking me up every day and taking me home every day. So I started asking my aunt whatever. Mind y'all, I'm still with Drew at this point. He getting rides from his friend. We gonna call him DJ, cause that's what I call him in the other video about him. Every time he wanna see me, he comes with DJ. So DJ got sick of being a third wheel, I guess. And I'm like, I have a friend. I have a friend named Tana. We all start hanging out. We don't hang out like every single day. I think we may have hung out like three times all together. Me and Tana met up with Drew and DJ. So we go to this neighborhood. I don't, I don't even remember where this neighborhood at. I don't know why this was the meetup spot, but it was, um, there was like some kind of like back alley bullshit. It was really giving back alley. Like it was blocked off by a gate and everything. Me, Drew and Tana all get out the car. DJ stays in the car. So we're talking and after a while, we go over to DJ car. We're like, why not out the car or whatever. Tana goes on the passenger side, opens the door and sit by him and they start talking. So me and Drew leave them like alone. So they can have their little time or whatever to talk. Like, Tana is the kind of girl, like if she don't want to do something, she will definitely tell you. She won't make a big scene about it, but she'll make it very, very clear. Like, no, I don't want to do this. I don't feel comfortable. I'm leaving. We're leaning on the car right in front of them. So I can see Tana. I can see them through the windshield. A little longer than a few minutes later. So me and Drew outside just talking and walking. We turn around and we see DJ's windows are fogged up. The first thing Drew think is that DJ getting something. And I'm like, absolutely not. Hell no, Tana is not like that. It's not going down like you. Something, something else is going on. Like it is a little chilly out. Like, I don't know. Like it was the type of weather that like fog up windows. Like it wasn't too cold. I don't know how to explain it, but I was just like, hell no. That's not happening. She's not like that. It's not going down. You got the wrong idea about this girl. I know this girl. She wouldn't do that. And Drew is not trying to hear it. He's like, no, come in, get some booty in the back seat. Just accept the fact that your friend is a hoe. So I'm like, while I'm like, absolutely not. You got my friend fucked up. That while I'm talking, I lose all credibility because the fucking car starts rocking. I'm like, no, 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 no. You just met this dude, why are you doing that? Like, no, I'm sitting up here defending you like I'm defending me with all my might, bitch with all my chest. And the car is rocking? Not a car rocking. If I keep going on trying to defend this girl, I sound stupid because windows fogged and the car is rocking. What the hell? Y'all let me know what the hell else they could have been doing. Oh, I remember we walked away, like we walked further down this way because when it stopped and she got out or whatever happened, like I didn't want her to know that we seen the car rocking and everything, even though we seen the fog windows. I didn't want her to like be embarrassed about I want to add, Tana had this good girl image she portrayed. And on top of that, she had recently just started talking to this guy that later became her long-term boyfriend. Morning. Drew was talking shit the whole time. I'm getting annoyed because I don't care what my eyes just saw. Like, stop talking about her like that at the end of the day. I'm not about to talk about her like that. Like, I'm not about to talk shit with you. I think that's what he thought I was gonna do. No. I hear a door open and close. Don't turn around. Drew turns around. He's like, oh, she getting out, she getting out. And I'm just like, okay, stop being childish. Drew was very childish, y'all. Oh my God. So I'm like, turn around, stop looking at her. I hear uh, DJ's door open and close and I hear her door open and close and I'm assuming she's in a car. So I'm like, all right, let's start walking back now. Cause she's in the car. Drew gets in DJ's car. When Drew is leaving, he's like, all right, Tana. See you later. So I'm like, all right, girl, you ready to go? And she was like, yeah, let's go, let's go. At first I wasn't gonna bring it up, but she looks weird now. Like 
something looks off about her. Just to be clear, when I'm saying something looked off about her, I mean her appearance looked off like her hair was messed up. Bottom mascara smudge, like it was hard not to say something. So I started talking to her, I'm like, so what did y'all talk about? Like, do you like him or whatever? And she was like, he's cool. We just like getting to know each other or whatever, da 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 So I'm like, did y'all do something? And she was like, what? Like, what do you mean? Like, what are you talking about? Like trying to play it off, but it was horrible. The acting was horrible. Like, I don't know if she didn't expect me to say something. So I'm like, Drew said he saw the car rocking and like the windows was foggy girl. Like I'm trying to say it in a joking way to make her think like, I'm not judging you, I don't care. She's like, no, we didn't do anything. Oh my God, what the hell? I hope he doesn't pretend like we did something because I don't like things like that. Like I don't like being like accused of stuff like that. She done worked up and upset. So I'm like, okay, that's fine, that's fine. She's like, I'm really tired. You can spend a night at my house. We're driving back towards her house. And then like all of a sudden, then her like mood switches. It was like some Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde shit. It was like really, really weird. So she's like, like, oh my God, I forgot my dad that I can't have company. And now I'm about to be late for curfew. This little curfew came out of nowhere. Mind you, I really did have a curfew. And if I wasn't home by 10 o'clock, then my aunt made it very clear, like stay where you at. Like if you're not home by this time, I'm shutting shit down, I'm locking it up stay where you at it was past 10 o'clock and it was gonna be 11 like she was saying so she was like i'm not gonna be able to drop you off and make it home in time for my curfew and i'm like when did this bitch get a curfew like we we really been chilling like matter of fact when when i was spending the night at her house she would literally leave at like 12 a.m so she could go like get tree or whatever so i'm like this bitch does not have a curfew like, i'm 100 percent sure she would not have a curfew unless i'm tripping she had the most freedom like that I had ever seen, especially for her age. I was like, you got a car, like she had everything. Like all her parents wanted her to do was keep a job. She starts like putting her hand over her mouth and like shaking like and acting like she's about to cry. I'm like, it's fine. Like, I don't think your dad would be upset. Like your dad is always in his room. Like you could just sneak me into your room. And she was like, you're gonna kill me. Like I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. And the Oscar goes to. So I'm like, I'm stuck, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to say. She turns around like she's about to like start taking me home and then like she pulls into a Sonic. This is where it becomes my fault because I shouldn't have got off the goddamn car. She's freaking out, having like this panic attack. I had never seen this side of her before. I had never seen, it was like a literal switch. I don't know who this was. She was acting like, I don't know. She's like, I'm not gonna have enough time to take you home and then get home. Mind you, we down the street from her house. I don't know why she wanted to get this close to her house, then decide to turn around and try to take me home. Girl, we are two minutes from your house. Let's continue going. My dad's gonna kill me if I don't make it in the house. If I'm not in the house, he's gonna lock me out. It was just like, girl, I had never like even seen this kind of energy from either one of your parents. Like they don't give it to you like that. Like that's, that's the shit that would happen to me. Like you don't get it like that. You have it really soft. Like you don't even get a, you don't, you don't even get this. Like, girl. Then she was like, can you just get out right here and then call somebody else to take you the rest of the way home? I'm like, bitch, I am nowhere near home. Girl, home is like 20 minutes from here. She's freaking out, putting on this show. And I'm scared. When I tell y'all, like my mouth is open, jaw drop. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm scared for her. Like, maybe I don't know something about her parents. That's what I'm thinking. And I don't want nothing to happen to her. Like. I don't want to see her tomorrow at work with bruises or nothing. I don't know anyone else with a car to call. And she was like, I have to go. I have to go home. My dad's going to kill me. Da, 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 da. So I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So I get out the car and she was like, can you call your aunt to pick you up? I really just want to make sure you're safe. I don't want anything to happen to you. Mind you, at this point, 11 had already passed. Girl, you're already going to be late. If you're going to get in trouble, you're going to get in trouble regardless. It's already after 11. So I was very much confused. So at this point, it's about like 11.30. And she was just like, can you call your aunt? I don't want nothing to happen to you. I have to get home, I have to. Y'all, when I tell y'all I ain't never been so stuck in my life, Okay, so I'm pretty sure I deleted this next clip on accident, but I'm gonna break it down right quick. So basically all I was saying that even though her dad did give off weird energy, when she was saying her dad to me, I think she was saying the boy that she just started talking to because he was a drug dealer and she did mention how he was also possessive and had a bad temper. Here comes Nyla. Hello. You have to sleep? You didn't? Why? You had a bad dream? Mm -hmm. Why are you flinging your bonnet? 
Okay, you can go for that though. No, you can keep it off. I know you, I know you don't really like it. Mind you, Sonic is closing. Depending on your location, like some Sonics close at 10, some close at 11, some close at 12. Depending on your location, this location closed at 12. It took me like a little minute to process this. I ain't gonna lie. Bitch, you're really stranded right now. And no, you're and you're not in walking distance like of your house. Like you're stranded. And it's late as hell. I am Scared. I'm, I'm trying to like look in Sonic to see if I see anybody in there. I don't see nobody in here. Of course, nobody's sitting outside eating and shit. Nobody's going through the drive through like there's nobody around here. I didn't know what to do because it's not like I needed to use a phone or anything because I had my phone. Like I just legit needed a ride. I was really scared to ask strangers for rides. So I don't know about that. I called Chelsea and I told Chelsea what just happened. And she was like, damn girl, are you serious? Like, why would she do that? And so I'm explaining it to her and she was like, that girl lying. She know damn well this and that and that and that. I'm like, I think she is too. Like, I don't know. Like she ain't never act this way before. Like I'm just breaking everything down to her. And she like gas in my head like this girl lying, da da da. So eventually I'm like, girl, do you know anybody like that could come pick me up and give me a ride? She was basically just like, no, I don't know nobody that like would be willing to come pick you up. I'm just like, damn. If anybody, I thought that she would like have somebody available because for anything else, somebody like is available. She's even found rides for me before, so I really thought that she was gonna have like a hookup, like. But after she said no, oh bitch. When I tell you I started panicking more, I sit down at like the little tables and stuff where you eat outside at, and I'm just like on my phone contemplating because I do not want to call my aunt. Like she do not play these type of games like, because I didn't know how to listen and get my ass home on time. So I'm like, damn, who else do I have? Like, like I said, I really don't fuck with people. I get up, I start walking around because I don't want to stay in one place. Now all the lights that were like lighting up Sonic outside, now they're off. So I'm like, I'm like, damn, now it's dark too. Like, I don't know why I thought those lights was gonna stay on. So now it's dark. The one person that was in there got in their car and now they're about to leave. And I'm still sitting up here stranded looking stupid. This is the part that killed me. This is the part that had me deceased. Actually, no, the part when that bitch left killed me. But this shit, I'm like, nah, I gotta be deceased. I gotta be deceased because this ain't happening right now. I get a text. And it's from Chelsea Fred. What can we call him? We gonna call him Andy. I don't know, we gonna call him Andy. So the text is from Andy and Andy is like, girl, are you standing outside of Sonic right now? First of all, I'm trying to process who the fuck this is because I didn't have their number saved. So I go up the thread, look, realize that it's Chelsea Fred and Andy. And I'm like, oh my God, yes, Andy, can you give me a ride? I'm stranded, like somebody left me stranded. The light turns green. I don't know what car, I don't see Andy's car anywhere. I don't know where Andy is. But Andy sees me. So Andy takes back like 10 seconds later, like rude as shit, let me, Andy was rude. But every time we got around Andy, it was always some beat. So this response, it shocked me, but when I really thought about it, it wasn't too shocking because he don't care about nobody but himself. He was like, girl, I'm in a rush. I'm on the way to my man house. No, I can't take you right now. I'm looking at my phone like, my heart dropped because I, I got so excited. Like I thought I had a ride. And then this nigga texted me that. Why did you even text me? Like, what did you text me for? This is exactly why. I don't mess with people. Mind you, me and Andy, we we were cool. Like, yeah, we were cool enough for you to text me. So like, you can't do me this favor. Like, I could have gave him gas money. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's talking about he in a rush to his man house. Like, I would never do that to nobody. It's not like I was some stranger. Like, me and Andy had hung around each other multiple times, like over six times. So I don't say nothing back. And then he sends another message saying, I hope you get home safe though. Wow. And I don't even think it was like sarcasm or anything funny. That's just really how he was. So I blocked and deleted Andy right at that moment. I want to add, Andy and Tana lived in the same neighborhood. They lived in the same area. I feel like every neighborhood had like that one fast food restaurant that was popping. My area had Popeyes. Chelsea area had Jack and the Crack. And Tana area had that Sonic. The part that was strange is like, you don't want to help. I understand that he wasn't obligated to help, but it's just like, damn, I would never do that to nobody. I just knew that I did not want to call my aunt. So I'm walking around, contemplating, twiddling my thumbs, biting my nails down to a nub. At this point, y'all should know I didn't make the best decisions because my first bad decision was to get out that damn car. Second bad decision was to not call my aunt straight away. As a teenager, where was my brain? It was lost. I'm just nervous, just like. Yeah. 
She don't call her. I can't call her. What if she don't answer? She gotta get up at 4 a.m. Panicking because there's no guarantee that she's even gonna answer the phone. So I'm like, you know what? I can't do this. Like homeless people starting to walk up. Something inside of me just got really scared, and I'm just like, no, you know, I have to do it. Y'all, I ain't never been this goddamn scared in my life. That's the phone. Um, hello, Aunt So and So. Can you pick me up? She sound like she was knocked out in a good sleep. And she was just like, what? Pick you up from where? Where are you? Where are you at? Tana dropped me off at Sonic. She said she had to get home before her curfew. And I'm like, basically stranded. What? What do you be thinking? What Sonic are you at? God, girl, I swear you don't think. And do you know how I figured out what Sonic I'm at? There were Sonic receipts, like, scattered out in the parking lot. And I sent her that address. 30 minutes later, she pulls up. It was silence. And you know silence is more scary than a parent actually going off and being mad and showing emotion. I tried to sit in the backseat. I'll never sit in the backseat, by the way. I tried to sit in the backseat. She's like, get your ass in the front seat. <laughs> When we get home, she was like, you know tomorrow we gonna have a talk about this. I was like, damn. Next day I call into work. The next day I go to work. Mind you, this part of the city not even open yet. So basically all, all we're doing is like stocking the shelves. So an hour into my shift, I see Tana like out of nowhere. I don't know if she was late. I don't know if she was hiding in the back. I don't know if she was like ducking and dodging or whatever, but I see her just like pop up out of nowhere. I just completely ignore her. That goes on for like half the damn shit until we basically have to work together because the manager that hired us, like we were all like buddy buddy the whole time. Like he doesn't know that we fell out. So he tells us to work together. Now we have to work on like a project together, like building a section of the store. 30 minutes into us not talking, awkwardly working together, Tana starts crying. Ugh. God. And the Oscar goes to. 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 It's the dramatics for me. Like, cut it out. Cut it. She was like, I'm really sorry. Like, I didn't mean to leave you stranded and I don't want you to be mad at me. My soft heart, stupid ass. Like, I don't like seeing people cry. Like, I don't like hurting people's feelings. Like, I don't get joy out of that. I'm trying to sympathize with this fool. When I started thinking about it and everything, when I started marinating on the situation, I really felt like she was embarrassed of what she did. I just felt like she knew she got caught doing something she said like she would never do, basically. It was not even that deep, girl. So I'm like, well, why did you do all of that? Basically, she admitted to it. So she cries, a whole bunch of, I don't want you to be mad at me. Wow. I can never look at this girl the same again because the route she chose instead of just owning her shit, because girl, at the end of the day, Ain't none of my business what you do with your private parts. I don't care. I really don't care. What I think should not matter when no one thinks it should matter. Why would you go that far? That was the most crazy reaction to some shit. Like, it was very unnecessary. She was just really trying to get me to sympathize with her for so long. Like, damn near the whole shift. We didn't get no work done that day. And then at the end of the shift, she was like, you want me to take you home? You can come to my house. She thought she was sweet. No, I got a ride. One thing I can say is, the way either she's like the best actress she needs an oscar or something or something about her dad she's terrified of or her dad don't like being around certain people that's all i'm gonna say that shit happened for a reason so whoo when i tell y'all though that that's one of like one of my first craziest memories like that's one of like the first craziest things that happened to me like it's like, you just can't make this shit up. Like, bro, this bitch really left me at Sonic with no regard for my safety. But, and then at the same time, it's my fault because my dumb ass got out of the car. So yeah, y'all, that's the end of this story. If you like the video, do not forget to give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to leave a comment and hit that subscribe button. And y'all already know I'm gonna see y'all in my next video. Bye. Nine minutes? Where the f nine minutes come from, bitch? I just sat down. Nine minutes. Let me hurry up before Nala wake up. Ooh, child. Y'all talking about y'all want these 72 minute unedited ass videos. Y'all don't want this. I will piss you off. All I do is joke, dance, 
sing, laugh, play, talk to myself, Lord. Y'all already know the vibes, go ahead and... Why my hair keep going flat? I don't like that. Why my hair keep going flat? I don't like that. Why my hair keep going flat? I don't like that. I don't like that. And I don't like that. Why my hair keep going flat? I don't like that. What the fuck is it saying? I do not want to stop this camera. What was I going to say? I'm stupid, okay. It's me. It's me. It's me. Not it's me. <laughs> Little ASMR. Y'all, it's the truth. I'm trying to tell you. Especially the zesty ranch. Me and my daughter love these. I was eating chips for a whole minute. What the f Honestly, ugh, honestly. Honestly, what's going on with my mouth? Everything I say is I'm done. 